Ockham. <lacht> ähm. Well, I feel welcome. So, well, it's great to see everyone here. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so, yeah, welcome to Giga Texas. Uh, so. All right, so let's see. I'll go over, kind of recount the year. It's been an amazing year. The Tesla team has done amazing work. Um, and I have to say, like, one of the things that I was like, what do you enjoy most in life? I really, uh, being able to work with a super talented group of people and to create great products and pr manufacture those products and deliver them to people and make people happy from those products, um, is, is that, that's the, one of the best things in life. Um, so, so yeah, I'd just like to say what an honor it is to work with such a talented team at, at Tesla, and that's the reason we've been able to do all these things. So, um, yeah, we're aiming to achieve a two million vehicle run rate by the end of the year. Uh, so. <laughs> this is the best crowd, I mean. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> um, I love you guys too. So, uh, anyway, uh, thanks to the, the hard work of the Tesla team, we've already been able to achieve a one and a half million unit annualized run rate. Um, and depending on how the, the rest of this year goes, we I think we might get close to, or we'll get approximately uh, at at the one and a half million mark. Um, and, and be exiting the year at a, a two million unit run rate. And, um, and then also worth noting, uh, just recently in the last uh, a few weeks, we made our three millionth car. So, yeah. You know, the, it's pretty wild to think like uh, 10 years ago where things were. You know, uh, 10 years, August uh, 2012, um, we'd, uh, we'd made 2,500 roadsters, and I think maybe a couple of hundred Model S's-ish, <laughs> but less than 3,000 cars. So 10 years ago, we'd made less than, than 3,000 cars. And uh, here we stand 10 years later, having made over 3 million. Uh, so. And uh, actually, actually, this is one of the cleanest exponentials I've, you know. It, it looks like one of those sort of, uh, you know, business plan presentation things that, that doesn't actually come true, but, you know, you, you see it in the venture capital uh, business plan situation. Um, but it's actually true. That's the amazing part. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're doing okay on demand. Um, so, um, thank you. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's great here. Um, I love California too, to be frank. I'm going to be clear. Uh, you know. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, we, we, we got great teams in California, and, uh, and, and I, we got a, a great team in, in, in China and Shanghai, and a great, great team in Berlin and Germany and Europe. It's so. Uh, um, yeah. And um, I thought it's, it's interesting to look at the, uh, the cumulative profitability since inception. Um, and, and this approximately tra tracks to uh, uh, sort of mental pain, uh, actually. <laughs> this is psychic uh, damage. Um, uh, that green curve is approximately correct. Um, but uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's, I'm just very proud of the fact that we've actually been able to, um, to, to, to produce more cash than we have spent um, and have positive retained earnings and be worth our salt, essentially. Um, and that, that's a really big deal. And it's very hard. So I mean, this, this, is, this is a big deal. And I think uh, it's going to go up from here. <laughs> 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 so, you can see we, we obviously had uh, some challenges there in 2017, um, and then, uh, but, but since then our free cash flow generation has been, been very good and uh, tr trending, trending upwards. And, and this is really before uh, autonomy really kicks in. We've had, we have a, autonomy to some degree, um, but uh, solving autonomy is, uh, will, will really be an amplification of, of free cash flow to a degree that is, you know, you run the numbers and it's like, wow, can it really be that crazy? But it, it could be that crazy. Um, and, um, you know, this, uh, this year I swear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 we got uh, anyone here uh, in the FSD beta program? Yeah! <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, no, uh, totally, totally, totally. Okay, well, I, I thought, I thought. <laughs> All right. Um, I thought I thought you might ask that. Um, so, because uh, it's ten to thirteen, we've been working on for a while, and. Um, and actually, what's sort of happened is we've we've uh, we've made some pretty significant uh, architectural improvements. Um, so it's really going to be more than a 10.12 to 10.13 release. It, it might I don't want to speak too soon. It might qualify for 10.69. <laughs> so it's got, it's got to earn that. Obviously, uh, can't just throw that out, you know. Um, but it's it's it's. Um, there's a lot of a lot of improvements, um, and uh, especially in uh, complex uh, left turns. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, we were, we're going to solve Chuck's turn. Yes, yes, 100 <laughs> percent. Absolutely. Uh, we, you know, we we have a lot of respect for valid criticism. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, so. Um, I, 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 th I think we're at roughly 90% success rate with, with your turn. So, yeah, we're almost at 100. So, um, so it's, it's looking good. And, um, yeah, so, I, I mean, I'm hopeful it might, might, it might be a week, next week. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, two weeks. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, it's working well for me. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. So anyway, team, teams like working literally seven days a week um, and, and making uh, ma major improvements. And it's really interesting because we're effectively solving an important aspect of artificial intelligence, uh, real world uh, AI for self driving, which uh, when you think about it, it kind of is what, what's needed to solve the to solve self-driving. Because how is the road system designed? It's designed for a biological neural net and eyes, 
And so naturally, the thing that would therefore work the silicon analog is cameras and uh, silicon neural nets. Um, and, and so sort of, sort of by accident, we're actually solving an important, I think, very useful uh, element of artificial intelligence. And um, I definitely want uh, people out there, you know, talented people who are working on AI to consider working at Tesla, because I think we're solving just a very important part of AI and one that can ultimately save millions of lives and uh, prevent tens of millions of serious injuries um, by, by driving just an, an order of magnitude safer than, uh, than, than, than people. Um, and, you know, there used to be a time back in the day where we'd have, yeah, it's, this is super important. Um, so. I mean, there used to be a time when we'd have elevator operators, and it was normal to have elevator operators and have like a big relay and stuff. But you know, every, can't, every now and again you make a mistake and shear somebody in half. So, uh, and I'd be like, oh, okay. Then we went to automated elevators, and you press a button, and you go to your floor, and it just works. Um, and, and that's kind of how it's going to be in the future with cars. Um, and yeah, so. And then we'll have lots of interesting things to say on AI Day at the end of next month. So I'll, I'll leave that to next month, yeah. So, um, you know, when we started out here, um, obviously we were told, to, we were told <laughs> electric cars were, were impossible, and even if really if you could make, a, you know, an electric car with a couple hundred miles range, then nobody would buy it anyway, because people just love gasoline cars. So, um, you know, when we started out, uh, it was, it was dumb, to, dumb to start a car company and then dumb squared to do an electric car company. Um, and we were told, yeah, you know, you're never gonna make money, et cetera, and we didn't for a, a while, but now we have the, the highest operating margin in the whole industry. So. Exactly. Um, exactly. Tesla is not just a car company. Tesla is many companies in one, and we're as much as a software company as we are a hardware company. Um, so, and that's that's really going to be obviously essential for the future. Um, and software, both in the car and obviously with neural net training, but also software in the factory as well. So you can think of the factory as a uh, you know giant cybernetic collective. So a factory is just an enormous cybernetic collective of humans and machines and software. And the, the better the software is, the better that cybernetic collective works. I don't think other OEMs think like that. <laughs> but it's, that's what it is. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of talk of uh, competition among uh, electric vehicles. But really, uh, it's, it's the, the EVs are, electric vehicles are taking a market share from gasoline cars. So, yeah. So, the, uh, and, and from a Tesla standpoint, we obviously welcome this and we're, we're very excited to see that uh, other, the big car companies are embracing electric vehicles. Uh, if you were to re rewind their press releases to five years ago, that was not the case. Uh, they were, you know, say, not saying nice things about electric vehicles. Five, five years ago. Um, but now, uh, I believe almost every major uh, car company in the world has embraced electri electrification and agrees that it is the right path. And uh, this is really what we set out to do with Tesla. Um, you know, it was not to, like, to, you know, get maximum market share or anything. It was really try to get the, to show the auto industry that it was possible uh, to go electric and that if you made compelling electric cars, people would buy them. And, um, and, and that's, that's what's happened. And I think that's really profound. So, yeah. Um, also, when, when our competitors advertise for electric vehicles, every time they do that, our sales go up. <laughs> so, so. It's, 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 it's pretty funny. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, but, but we do, uh, we, we have open sourced all our patents so they can use our patents for free and so we're, you know, helping out and I think it's sort of a mutual prosperity thing and it's, it's good, so. Um, <laughs> you 
Yeah, so Model Y. Um, uh, you don't want, you know, def definitely don't want to count chickens until they're hatched, but I think we're tracking to have uh, Model Y be the highest uh, selling vehicle by revenue this year and the highest by unit volume next year. So. Um, st still a lot of work to do. Uh, like these, these factories don't just magically work. Um, so uh, still a lot of work to do uh, in Berlin and, and here in Austin to uh, spool up these uh, two gigafactories. Um, and we've got different supply chains. And so it's always, there's a host of problems. Uh, none of the problems are individually all that difficult, but there's like 10,000 of them. So it's, it, the rate of production is like, how fast can you solve the 10,000 problems, essentially? And we're, we're solving them pretty fast, uh, but uh, a lot of work to do. And um, you know, we might be able to announce another factory location later this year. Uh, <laughs> uh, wait, uh, wait, wait. Where, where should we? Okay, where, sh where should we build it? <laughs> okay, we got a lot, got a lot of Canadas. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm half Ca I'm half Canadian, so maybe I should, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, well, I think you know. Ultimately, we'll, we'll end up building. I don't know. Probably at least uh, ten or twelve, uh, ten or twelve gigafactories, uh, and there will there will be really gigafactories like output. Uh, you know, aiming for output average output of like one and a half to two million units per factory, which is enormous. So, um, and the. Our Fremont factory in California is, is uh, already the highest output factory in North America. So. <laughs> Sorry? Well, I think we'll have a friendly competition uh, <laughs> between uh, Texas, California, Berlin. Shanghai is hard to beat, I have to say. Shanghai <laughs> is a uh, Pretty, our, our Shanghai team is, is just awesome. So, that they're, they're uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> great great team there. So, uh, with respect to you know, sometimes we get this sort of uh, you know these bogus attacks of like EVs are somehow worse than gasoline cars, um, which is not true. Uh, the average life cycle emissions of, of an EV are dramatically lower than that of a gasoline car. I'm kind of telling you things you already know. Um, but uh, you know, every now and again, you think surely this nonsense has been put to bed, but it it, uh, it pops up again. But it's obviously an electric cars is dramatically lower uh, CO2 lifetime than than any uh, than, a, than a gasoline car. Um, so anyway, that's kind of obvious. Now, now this this is a thing that I think is super cool. Um, if you add up all the energy produced over the last 10 years by uh, Tesla solar panels, uh, it is more energy than was used to manufacture all of our cars and charge all of our cars at superchargers and at home. This is... I mean, this is like... And, and I mean, the, the, the mission of Tesla is to accelerate sustainability. And the, I think this, this is really a, amazing, you know. Um, more energy produced than was used in making the car or and charging them all, all over billions of miles. So, and we're going to keep obviously increasing uh, our solar activity and uh, and vehicles and um, and try to keep keep these on par um, because the, the three elements of a sustainable energy future are, are sustainable energy production, primarily with solar and wind, and then uh, stationary battery packs uh, to store the the. Uh, the sustainable energy because of its wind and solar are intermittent, intermittent and then uh, electric transport. And if you have those three pillars, you have a fully sustainable future. Um, and yeah, so that's...
It's, it's, yeah. yeah. And obviously, battery packs are various recy recyclable. They are, you can think of it like high-grade ore. Do, do you wanna you know, crunch up a bunch of rocks or crunch up a battery pack, which is like super high-grade ore? So it's a no-brainer to uh, recycle battery packs. And um, we are al already recycling. I should point this out, so sometimes people wonder what's happening. We're already recycling uh, at over 50 a week uh, in, um, in Nevada. So Tesla battery recycling is already uh, underway, has been underway, and is scaling up. Um, now, cars are lasting quite a long time, so there's not that many batteries to actually recycle uh, because you kind of have to typically wait like 12 years or something, like quite a long time before the battery actually uh, is no longer useful, um, sometimes 15 years. So recycling starts off small, but then it becomes very significant long term. Um, So, <laughs> some, some factory footage, obviously. <laughs> uh, just 50 packs uh, a week, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I was saying, like, there's actually just not that many packs to recycle because there's not, the, the, the vast majority of them are still in use. Um, Sorry? Oh, yes, exactly. Um, that's what I'm sorry. Uh, where is that thing? Uh, <laughs> so, um, so Mass Plan 3 is uh, going to be fundamentally about scaling. Um, just looking at the overall problem from a global macroeconomic standpoint and saying, um, what what are all the things that are needed to achieve a fully sustainable e economy? Because I think a lot of people don't, don't know. Um, and really, like, w w what tonnage of uh, lithium, of cathode, anode, separator electrolyte, uh, electronics, what are all the things that are needed, that, what, that, what are all the things that need to be done in order to transition to a fully sustainable global economy, which I think, you know, the sooner we do that, the, the better for the planet. And I think just articulating that and, and just making it clear that this is absolutely doable and it, it, it is being done and we just want it to be done as fast as, as possible. Because I think a lot of times, I mean, I, I meet a lot of people out there who, ha who have lost hope. You know, they think, they think it's too late, and they think there's, there's no chance, and the earth is doomed. It's like, it's not doomed, <laughs> okay? It's, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> earth can and will be saved. Yeah. So, uh, in addition to battery advancements and, and uh, electronics advancements and AI, we've also done a lot to simplify the structure of cars to make it easier to manufacture. And one of the things we've done is uh, create the, the largest castings uh, that have ever been done. Um, and they're very complex castings. And so we're able to take uh, 171 pieces of metal and uh, go from 171 pieces to two. Um, and in the process, make it lighter, uh, stiffer, uh, with better ride handling, better noise vibration harshness, uh, better uh, sealing against uh, water. Uh, so it's really better in every way. And yeah, so. <laughs> so, th th and we're gonna keep uh, enhancing the, the, the casting. So. This is a testament to our materials team and to our, we have a lot of casting technology. So we're really rethinking the whole way in which a car is made. And it's, a, yeah, it's a gigantic improvement. Um, we have, at this point, from going from, say, Model S or even Model 3, we're at about 
30% of the robots used for Model 3, for, for a current Model Y. So, yeah. Um, we've also improved the uh, layout of the factory. So the factory is sort of a, it's sort of a single, mon or close to a single monolithic factory uh, with a very straightforward flow. Um, Fremont, we, we do a lot in Fremont, but the flow is complex and, and, and uh, it's, it's not, not an easy flow. So we're really rethinking the factory. Um, and I, I think if the, the, like the really long-term sustainable advantage of Tesla will be manufacturing. I mentioned this before, but uh, obviously everyone will have electric cars, all manufacturers will have electric cars, um, and uh, eventually, it'll probably take longer than they think, but eventually all cars will be self-driving. Um, and the thing that will be hardest to replicate is uh, Tesla's manufacturing technology. So this is actually very important for, from a long-term standpoint. You know, it, it, when thinking about the competitiveness of com companies, especially if the companies are technology companies, uh, I recommend looking at where the smartest engineers want to work. This is, where, wherever the, the smartest engineers want to work, that's going to be, that, that, that technology company is going to be the one that uh, is likely to succeed. Um, just like if it's a pro sports team, where are the ace players going? Okay, probably that team will win. Um, so we've we put a lot of effort into ensuring that the best engineers in the world want to work at, uh, at Tesla. And, and frankly, so sometimes Tesla, Tesla's number one, sometimes SpaceX number one, but um, so this is just like, like last year. Um, but, uh, and, and we do actually, for those curious and maybe want to work at either SpaceX or Tesla, uh, we do allow people to uh, move from one company to the other if they would like. So if you want to spend a bit of time working on electric vehicles, a bit of time spending working on rockets, you can, that, that's cool. We support that. So, yeah. And we've also made a lot of improvement with uh, factory safety. So we, I think we, we believe we now have the, the best factory safety in the industry. And um, uh, so, we're, we're, yeah, we're excited to have, uh, you know, very good safety and getting better. So, yeah. And a, a bunch of this is driven by just encouraging people within the factory to submit ideas for safety improvement. And uh, we've passed our goal of, of three suggestions per employee in, uh, this year. And this, this really is a game changer for improving safety. So, and, yeah. <laughs> don't, you don't have to clap after every slide unless you really want to, but. Um, <laughs> but um, so we, we, we had, there's a lot of interest in working at Tesla with three million job applications uh, last year. So, sorry? Yeah, it's true. Uh, so, a lot of interest in working at Tesla. Uh, <laughs> now, some people may occasionally have encountered a supercharger that didn't work, um, but in general, uh, the uptime of our superchargers is extremely good. And we just try to make it super smooth, and the, we, we, because our superchargers are always connected, like the car is always connected, our feedback loop for uh, fixing a supercharger is very quick. Um, and obviously, we, we keep upgrading the supercharger capability. We're now at version three. We'll start rolling out version four. I don't know, maybe next year. Um, so they just the, the superchargers get better and better. And um, you know, who knows the? Yeah, uh, actually, I don't want to give away the. <laughs> uh, but, but let's just say that there's there's some there's some cool stuff happening on the supercharging front. So. Uh, <laughs> Alaska, yes. Um, <laughs> all right, well, we, we, we're, we're basically doubling our supercharger count every year. So if there isn't a supercharger in some place that you think is important, it probably will be there soon. So.
Um, we've also made a lot of progress on uh, safety. So our cars are already the, uh, the safest in the industry. Uh, so we have the lowest probability of injury of any cars ever tested by the, the US government. Um, and uh, we update this in real time. So we, because our cars are, are connected, this is a big difference. Um, all, all the other cars, with rare exception, are not connected. So, that, so the manufacturers don't really know what happened in a crash. But in, in the case of Tesla, we are able to look at crashes and see how can we improve the safety and uh, you know, look, look at the crashes, improve the, 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 the crash structure. Uh, also, uh, we uh, improve how the seat belts tension and how the uh, airbags deploy. So in, in these updates, if we figure out, oh, there's a slightly better way to deploy the airbags to improve the safety in a crash, we'll actually do an over-there update to improve the way that the airbags deploy or the way that the seat belt pretensions. Um, and we're now starting to include uh, our so, uh, Tesla autopilot AI to be able to see if a crash is about to occur, and if it uh, if it's, it sees that a crash is about to occur with 99 plus percent probability, then it will activate the, the seatbelt pretensioners and deploy the airbags, as opposed to uh, the, what the vast majority of cars do is the, the, they only the vast majority of cars are only able to deploy uh, airbags when the crash is happening, and so that's. Uh, that makes the airbag deployment a lot more violent, but if you can anticipate the crash, the airbag deployment can be um, much better than, uh, than, than just uh, impact. So, thank you. Uh, we're also seeing FST beta grow uh, very rapidly, um, and this, this is definitely gonna go very exponential in miles uh, driven. So we're now at over 40 million miles, and I suspect by the end of this year we'll be, I don't know, well over 100 million miles. So, and we're still tracking very much to have a, a wide, widespread deployment of FSD beta this year in North America. So I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. So, I should say, if, if basically, FSD beta will be available to anyone who requests it um, by the end of this year. So. <laughs> so, AI Day Part Two. Uh, I think people will be blown away, uh, but that's at the end of next month. So, we'll leave that. It's, except, it's there's going to be a lot of cool stuff. So. Um, <laughs> the, now I'm sort of surprised uh, that, you know, people, or at least like analysts out there, are not really understanding the importance of the Optimus robot. Um, my guess is Optimus will be more valuable than the car, th than long term. Um, and, and in fact, it will, I think, turn the whole notion of what's an economy on its head. Um, at the point at which you have uh, no shortage of labor, you know, an economy is GDP per capita. If you do not have a capita constraint, then the economy just is, can, can be arbitrarily huge. So, yeah, this, it's sort of crazy. <laughs> anyway, and, and thank you for voting. So, your vote matters, and, and it's great to have direct contact with uh, individual shareholders, and thank you for, for voting to support uh, our proposals. So. so the next the next decade, um, huh? I wonder how many cars we'll have in, in ten years. Uh, yeah, 10 years ago, we had less than 3,000 cars. Now we've made 3 million. 300 million. <laughs> I'd say 100 million is pretty doable. So, uh, 
I'd be surprised if it's, I'd be surprised if it's not over 100 million in 10 years. Um, and then many other products, some of which you've heard about, some of which you have not. <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> blurt it out. <laughs> All right. So uh, the, uh, we, we've got some uh, questions from the internet that were voted to the top. So I'll, I'll answer these questions, and then we'll take just qu questions from the audience. Uh, and uh, so one of the questions is, how does Tesla intend to utilize cash in the, in the coming years? Uh, will we increase CapEx? CapEx uh, well, I guess you can read the question. Uh, share buybacks, dividends, or acquisitions? Um, well, it's interesting, like, it, it, Tesla's actually done very few acquisitions. Apart from the Solar City acquisition, it was the only really uh, big acquisition we did, and then the next largest would be Tesla uh, Groman. Um, but it's, t Tesla's actually used a remarkably uh, small amount of its equity to do acquisitions compared to other companies. Uh, the vast majority of our growth, basically 90% of our growth, has been organic, um, which I think is actually a, a really good thing. Um, if, but if we, if we do see interesting companies, uh, we, you know, we will acquire them, but our, it, it's quite rare for us to acquire a company. Um, but we are interested in companies that are very good at manufacturing automation, uh, software, AI, uh, manufacturing technology in general, that kind of thing. Um, we certainly will increase uh, CapEx. Uh, I mean, we're, we're actually spending uh, cap so we're spending CapEx money and R&D money um, as fast as we can do so without wasting it. So this is not a constraint. Um, if we try to spend it any faster, we'd just be wasting money. So we're, we're, we're cranking hard on, on CapEx and uh, R&D. Um, depending on what our future cash flow looks like, uh, I think a sort of share buyback is, is possible. I, wouldn't want to commit to that, but uh, well, you know, let's just make sure uh, you know that there's not some force majeure event somewhere. <laughs> um, you know, I think we want to make sure we, we have plenty of capital, that and that future cash flow is looking very solid, uh, and the world is relatively stable. And then I think uh, share buyback is is on the table. Yeah. So how many factories are necessary to achieve 20 million vehicles? I think probably roughly a dozen. So we're, we're aiming for uh, one and a half to two million units per factory. Um, now, our factory in California, we, we just run out of room, so it's, it's hard to get um, more than maybe 700 or 800,000 vehicles a year out of there. Um, but uh, most, most places will be aiming for one and a half to two. So. <laughs> it, it doesn't cite. Although we, we are aiming for giant monolithic buildings. <laughs> uh, uh, Cybertruck pricing, uh, it was unveiled in 2019 and the <laughs> And, and the reservation was $99. So, you know, things have, a lot has changed since then. Uh, so, so the specs and the pricing will be different. I, you know, hate to sort of give a little bit of bad news, but I, I think there's, there's no way to sort of have, haven't anticipated quite the inflation that we've seen and the various issues. Um, but what I can say is that the Cybertruck will be one hell of a product. And it's going to be like a, Damn fine machine. So, yeah. And we're all tracking to be in production um, uh, middle of next year from this factory. So that we're installing. We're, we're going to be installing the production equipment, tooling, and all. Uh, uh, starting uh, in the next couple of months, we'll begin the uh, the installation. So aiming to be in volume production middle of next year. So. Now, what could possibly go wrong in answering this question? <laughs> I, 
Oh, man. All right, all right so, uh, um, <laughs> I should just pass. Uh, well, let me just say that, uh, uh, you know, I, I hope for peace and respect. <laughs> Um, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, good advice. Uh, so, we're, de try to, we're, de we're deploying superchargers wherever we see the greatest need. Um, now, sometimes the greatest need is in some place that is extremely difficult to get permits, uh, like the uh, getting a permit in Malibu was nuts. Like, <laughs> it was next level. That took years. Um, and uh, so some places are hard to get permits, uh, and some places are easier. Um, but we are aiming to just generally, we, we, we analyze the supercharger usage uh, every day and, and we prioritize our supercharger locations according to where we see the greatest need. Um, with respect, <laughs> what, sorry, where? Well, you know, maybe we should do an online poll for where is it, where should we put superchargers? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good, okay, we'll do that. Um, so, I mean, with respect to amenities uh, for, with, with superchargers, I think um, we'll do a couple of just fun, fun things. Like, we're going to do a really fun supercharger location in LA. And the general vision is to have something that's like a futuristic, uh, kind of like diner, sort of like, I don't know, uh, Blade Runner meets Grease meets Jetsons. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, something cool, different, and but with some style, and and uh, where, where you can, you know, get, you know, uh, some some great food, and um, the one in LA, we're, we're planning to have like th these big screens at the supercharger location, and the screens will uh, be aiming to show like the hundred hundred greatest movie clips of all time, and so you can like, you know, have a cheeseburger and uh, charge your car and watch some cool stuff on the screen. Um, and uh, it'll be open to others who are not, you know, you can come to the restaurant if, even if you don't own a Tesla. But it'll be like a, like a little gem, I think, there in, in, in LA. And, and then depending on how that goes, we'll, you know, we might roll that out to a few other places. We will try to do interesting, fun things that are not necessarily economically sensible, but they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, 4680. Um, the whew, this is a this is not an easy one to answer. Um, we we are making a decent number every week, um, and I think we will be in high volume production by the end of this year. It's it's always difficult to predict. This is because a lot of new technology. What's the slope of the S curve on ramp, and Except that I'm confident we will get to the, uh, you know, the, the high production rate, uh, but it's probably uh, end of this year before we get confidently to a high production rate. Um, but but this does not affect our vehicle output. We actually have uh, enough uh, s supply from uh, enough battery cell supply from suppliers to make one and a half million cars this year. So it's not a constraint on output. Uh, it, it, but it, is, it will be important for next year. <laughs> and uh, new mass plan is not, not yet ready. Um, I don't know, maybe aim, aim to get it done this month. But like I said, it's going to be just uh, looking at the big picture. What does it take to make Earth uh, fully self-sustaining from an energy standpoint? And uh, yeah, just map it out and say this is, this is what needs to be done. 
Tesla will try to be as useful as possible in this regard, and, and hopefully uh, lots of other companies can join in and, and help accelerate the sustainable energy revolution. <laughs> so. <laughs> With peak inflation behind us, so the inflation question is, is interesting because we, we do get a fair bit of insight into where prices of things are going over time. Um, because when you're making millions of cars, uh, you have to um, purchase commodities many months in advance of when they're needed. Like, so you need to tell, because it's a very long supply chain with a tremendous amount of inertia, so we, we sort of have some insight into uh, where prices are headed over time. And the interesting thing that we're seeing now is that uh, most of our commodities, most of the things that go into a Tesla, not all, but I don't know, more, more than half, the prices are trending down in six months, six months from now. Now, this could change, obviously, but, but the trend is down, which suggests that uh, we are past peak inflation um, now, making macroeconomic uh, prognostications is uh, you know, a recipe for disaster, but uh, my guess is that we're past peak inflation um, and that we will see, ha we will have a recession. I think it will be a, a relatively mild recession, sort of, uh, I'm just guessing here, this is total uh, speculation. Um, but I would guess it's a, it's a, you know, mild recession for, I don't know, 18 months or something like that. Um, it would be my best guess right now. Um, you know, we don't have fundamental capital misallocations in the, in the U.S. as we have had in the past, like in leading up to 2008, where we were building primary housing units at twice the rate of, of household formation, which obviously doesn't make sense. Um, and there were a lot of companies that were over levered. The, the, the leverage or, or, or debt that companies have right now is relatively low. Um, so, yeah, I would say probably, you know, mild, moderate recession, maybe 18 months ish. Um, and, um, and, and I think we, I think inflation is going to drop uh, rapidly. That's my guess. I don't know, what, what do you guys think? So, sound about right? Okay, great. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, the, the Tesla robot essentially changing the economy. Like, how can we base an economy on automation, AI? With the full self-driving that's being implemented, you're going to have a full fleet of vehicles that can drive themselves. You'll have these robots that can go and get into your vehicle and, and place things. Will you be moving to a, a, a rental model, or, or how will you base a Tesla model on selling cars whenever these cars are fully automated, can drive wherever they would like, and hopefully would be uh, applicable to having multiple people use the vehicle instead of just one person? Yeah, so it's interesting to think about an autonomous car because you know, when you drive around, look at, you know, look at how many cars are parked. Like, they're just parking lots full of cars everywhere uh, because cars need a driver, and so most of the time they're doing nothing. Um, you know, typically a passenger car is going to be like 12 hours a week or something like that of usage. Um, now, if it's autonomous, maybe it can get to 50 or 60 hours of usage. Then that's sort of, you know, four or five time, four, four or five fold improvement in the utility of a car. But the interesting thing is that the car still costs the same. So in that scenario, at least for some period of time, the, the effect of gross margin on an autonomous car is kind of boggles the mind. Um, so in, in, in terms of how the cars will be operated, I mean, I think it would be, you know, just, um, You'd have the option of, of, of owning a car, uh, using a car just occasionally when you need it, like an auto, auto Uber or something like that. Um, 
and there would be people, and then an owner of a car could decide that they want to use their car or they want to add or subtract it to the fleet. Um, so I think it would end up being some kind of combination of like Airbnb and Uber or something like that. You know, so sometimes you you know you can go all the way from owning it to renting it sometimes to renting it a lot to completely renting it. Um, but the but the, the the utility of the car will just be mind-blowingly great. And then, like I said, Optimus will will really bring the future to now. So. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Maybe maybe you could rent Optimus hourly. Um, yeah. um, I mean, assuming we get all these things, we do all these things, I think probably Tesla will be the most valuable company in the world. So. Elon, hi. Um, we all know how the media treats you. Um, so I, well. Yeah. So I don't have a question for you today. Um, I just want to say on behalf of my six-year-old at home, Kyler Scott, that's watching right now, who thinks you're awesome as well, thank you for making the world a better place. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, I love you guys too. I, I, I mean, I just like to say th th thank you for helping make it happen. Um, yeah, because w with, without, without, the, without you, without the early adopters of uh, electric vehicles and sort of full self-driving, Tesla would not be where it is today. So thank you for your support. Uh, sure. What a presentation. Uh, thank you, Tesla team. It's an honor to be a stockholder. Elon, I brought you the final checkpoint for SpaceX, a mini moon. Maybe little legs can play with it. My name is David Guajardo. I'm a former Brownsville resident. My first suggestion is to add a new string mode option where the driver can select lazy mode and have the software accommodate between comfort, standard, and sport modes, depending on the speed the car is going. This will increase handling and safety. Second, when, the, when disengaging autopilot with the wheel, the accelerator stays on. Please fix it. Last one. Weeks ago, talking to Mr. Sam Patel at Starbase, I told him that the team should add a tab in the SpaceX website and disclose what type of skills and preparation are going to be needed from us to accomplish the greatest adventure ever, ever in human history, going to Mars. All right, well, th th thanks for the suggestions. Those, those are good suggestions. Thank you. All right. Uh, Hi. So I do actually have a question, <laughs> but one thing <laughs> that I want to, okay. uh, to ask is, like, people ask you all the questions. What do you think people miss and should be excited way more about? And what do you think people are fretting way too much about and shouldn't be worried at all? Yeah, that's actually that's a good point. Um, you know, I, I think actually the the questions uh, and ideas posed by uh, re uh, retail investors, like small retail investors, like I think many of you in the audience, are actually the most insightful. Um, and it's, I find it remarkable that, um, you know, essentially amateur, like n n normal everyday people actually <laughs> understand Tesla better than the analysts. I mean, I must, you must see this as like, <laughs> that's like, <laughs> And, and I mean, I think like you know, to really say like, well, like what's the, what's the, what's the point of a, co a company is the point of a company is to create useful products and services. You know, a company is not should not exist in and of itself. It exists. It's 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 a group of people gathered together to make uh, products and services. And if those products and services are great, it's a valuable and useful company. And if they're not, it's there's not. And so, really, to understand a company, you must use its products. And if you think the products are great, then it's well. 
the company is great. That's it. That, that, that's how it is. Um, and so I, I think, ironically, a lot of the peop people that, that are sort of professional analysts don't drive Teslas. So I'm like, well, OK, you know, maybe you should. <laughs> yeah, cool. I mean, I mean, we aim to have, make Tesla the most amount of fun you can have in a car, you know? So. Um, yeah, so let's see. So I, so I think that, that there are a lot of really good and insightful ideas um, that, that I see uh, on the internet, on Twitter and whatnot. And, um, oh yeah, Twitter. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so let's see. Um, I, I think sometimes people fret a bit too much about uh, short-term things, that w which are clearly just, um, you know, just bumps in the road type of thing, uh, where there might be a supplier shortage or, a, you know, some shutdown in some part of the world. Um, but, um, but, but really, those things are, you know, are, are clearly just kind of one-off items and don't really matter for the long term. Um, the, the, the sort of, the, you know, the, the, the trend, if you, like looking at the sort of cumulative output and cumulative miles driven, um, and you can see that that cumulative output is a very clean exponential. Um, and it's, it's so, you know, so, so I guess sometimes people fret a little bit too much about this quarter or that quarter. But, um, you know, if you're a shareholder, a company is really like the net present value of future cash flows. And so what is a, you know, a, a one quarter is not really a big deal. Um, I, I think if you see people panicking, then instead of saying, oh, man, my stock's gone down, there's a buying opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> So. Uh, hi, Elon. Thanks for the meeting. Uh, I became a Marine because I want to help protect your future base on Mars. My friends and I are trained, and we're, we support the mission. Would you be open to this idea? Yeah, Space Marines, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Elon. A lot of Tesla's products today focus on electrical energy for a sustainable future. Do you foresee uh, Tesla perhaps exploring thermal energy sustainable products other than HVAC? Like, say, for example, in this Giga factory, taking the residual heat from the Giga presses and applying them to, say, the drying ovens in your paint line? Um, yeah, I think um, get, getting. Um dual use of like if, if you use electricity to do something and then it generates heat and then you transporting that heat elsewhere within the factory it's it's, it's probably a good idea to, to do that actually um, it, it, it is a it, an, sort of I would say a future optimization but but it is probably something worth doing in the factory and it is something we do in the car so in the car we carefully manage uh, the the electrical and the thermal energy and so like one of the ways that uh, we achieve a, a long range in cold weather is uh, by both charging the pack and heating the pack. And then the pack acts as a, both an electrical and a thermal reservoir to achieve long range even in very cold climates. Um, and so we're constantly, sh within the car, shuttling uh, heat back and forth between motor, driver, motor power electronics, pack, and the cabin volume. So that same concept should be applied to, to a factory, I agree. Elon, what's up, man? Uh, my name is Justin. Some know me as SMD Capital on Twitter. Um, I've, I had the number one voted question last earnings about scaling to extreme size. I have another big question I think a lot of people would want to know. Uh, in regards to when would Tesla launch their first pilot city for the Tesla network, the robo-taxi business? <laughs> um. Well, you see, I think it's actually going to be probably um, much more widespread than that because uh, Tesla is, is developing a general solution for self-driving, um, and it's not really specific to 
uh, one city or location. Now, there's different regulatory requirements in, in various cities and states. So some locations will pr uh, pr offer regulatory approval sooner than others, but, um, but we are aiming for a general solution. Um, and um, in, in fact, <laughs> if, if, you, if you created a sort of a, a randomly generated alternate Earth, our system would still work. Like literally, you know, like you had some sort of computer generated Earth uh, that, you know, obeyed roughly the same rules as current Earth. Uh, our system is sufficiently generalized that it would work in uh, you know, a computer generated alternate Earth. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm Gary Black, managing partner of the Future Fund. Tesla is our largest position. Probably the thing we worry about most, it's not, not PR, but it's, um, <laughs> it's succession. So, you know, key man risk is a big thing. How, how does the board think about your succession, and especially when you have, you know, a judge is going to decide in a couple months whether or not you have to take over Twitter? How would you split your time? <laughs> um, well, I think you know, Tesla is definitely gathering a lot of momentum, and we have a very exciting product roadmap uh, that will last a long time. Um, so now, obviously, execution against the, that roadmap is, is difficult because these are not simple products. They're not copies of what anyone else is doing. They're new things. Um, so, but I intend to stay with Tesla as long as I can be useful. Um, and, um, you know, I can be most useful, I think, on the product design and, and manufacturing. So basically factory design, product design, um, and uh, sort of manufacturing optimization. So, um, and we, we do have a very talented team here. So I think, uh, I think Tesla, you know, would continue to do very well even if uh, I was kidnapped by aliens. <laughs> oh, or went, went back to my home planet, maybe. <laughs> uh, but so yeah, um, but no, I, th I think it's it's a good question, and I, I, to be frank, I don't have a, an easy answer. Uh, open to ideas. Uh, that uh, you know, I'm definitely working as hard as I can, and um, and I'm very excited about the future of the company. And uh, you know, I think it's it's got a, it's got a very bright, very bright future, uh, even without me. Um, so, uh, and I'm, I'm not leaving, so uh, to be clear. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I obviously have to be a little careful about what I say with about Twitter because, uh, you know, there's this like lawsuit and stuff. Um, so sometimes people get bent out of shape. Um, but I, I, I do use Twitter a lot, so it's not like I would, I'm like randomly going around wanting to acquire companies or something. I'm not like a hedge fund. I'm not a hedge fund or a private equity firm or something. So, um, in fact, the, the only two. Uh, publicly traded securities I own are Tesla and Twitter. That's it. So, um, and I think in the case of Twitter, since I use it a lot, um, shoot myself in the foot a lot, you know, uh, <laughs> dig my grave, etc. Um, but uh, you know, I think it's. I, I do understand the product quite well, so I think I've got a good sense of of where to where to point the engineering team. Uh, at Twitter to make it radically better, um, and um, I, I, I do I, I do sort of have a well, like a grander vision for what I thought X.com or X Corporation could have been back in the day. Um, it's, it's a pretty pretty grand vision, and now obviously that could be started from scratch or. But I think Twitter would help accelerate that by three to five years. 
Um, so it's kind of like something I, I thought would be quite useful for a long time. I know what to do. Don't, don't have to have Twitter for that, but it would, it's, like I said, it's probably at least a three-year accelerant. Um, and I think it's something that will be very useful to the world. So. How's it going, Elon? My name's Ronnie, and with the projected release of the Robo Taxi coming in the years ahead, uh, would it be looked at as a, the boring company? Would it be used to get regulation for full self driving, and would it be a good venue for the Robo Taxi? Also, my little brother Zane says hi, owns all Tesla Hot Wheels. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I said hi to him back. Um, so, yeah, the boring company is. <laughs> um, Making good progress, actually. Uh, and um, you know, for the longest time, people, like I'd give a talk somewhere, and people say, what, what are opportunities you know about? I was like, tunnels. And they'd be like, for, for five years, I said, if, if somebody could just do a tunneling company, we can solve traffic, um, and we could have also very high-speed transport between cities. Because while I, I'm a fan of trains, and I like high-speed trains, they do, they do intersect the, the you know, go, go through towns and neighborhoods, and chop people's property in half, and they're very loud. So, um, but I want to be clear, I'm pro-train, for those of train people, you know. Um, I take every opportunity to drive, to go on interesting trains. Um, so, but, the, but, but, the, but if you have a sort of, a much simplified version of the Hyperloop, it's really just Tesla's in a tunnel that's depressurized. Uh, you can go between cities super fast. Um, and without disrupting the stuff above ground. Um, so that's kind of the vision for the Boring Company is to uh, make, make roads 3D and have sort of an arbitrary, uh, an arbitrary number of layers of roads. Um, and I think you can solve essentially any traffic problem in any city if you go 3D with uh, with, with tunnels, so multiple layers of tunnels going from, you know, connecting the, the city. And you can also turn a lot of the streets into parks, because you won't need them any, you won't need to have cars in the roads, you won't need parking. Um, so I think, Boring Company, I think, is capable of much more transformation than it may seem. Um, and we, we actually have an operational tunnel in Vegas right now. So, yeah, if you, if you go to Vegas, uh, Go to Resorts World, and you can hop in the tunnel and, and go to the convention center. And like, yeah, and you can pay in Doge. <laughs> exactly. I'm doing what I can to support Doge. <laughs> so, um, so, but yeah, I think, I think Boring Company is going to do some pretty interesting things in the years to come. So let's see. Uh, good afternoon, Elon. Um, I think. Many people share my experience. I gave you, and, or at least Tesla, my complete family's legacy because I believed in it. And thank you for you and your company outperforming. I think you saved a lot of us. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So my question is this. Uh, commercial aircraft have something called ACAS, where aircraft relay telemetry of their position between one another to a permanent collision. Yeah, sometimes too much telemetry. <laughs> Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, taking this to a higher level, do you see Teslas communicating with one another, with one another, and Dojo turning into some kind of ultimate air traffic control for Tesla supply chains and robo taxi? Thank Ooh. you. Actually, that's an interesting idea. I haven't thought about that. Um, I mean, right now, our goal with Dojo is just to be really good at video training. Um, so, we, we actually already have, I think, the maybe the fourth, and maybe approaching the third. Uh, most powerful computing uh, center in the world for, for uh, AI training. Um, yeah, I think it might be third at this point, which obviously uses just an enormous number of GPUs and stuff. So, um, so our, our, our first goal with, with Dojo is to make it competitive uh, and, and, and be, be more effective at neural net training than a whole bunch of GPUs. Um, and uh, we might, you know, might get there soonish. Um, 
And, and then, of course, it can be used for many other uh, neural net training tasks. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a fundamentally, it's a computer designed from the ground up to be optimized for neural net training, which, which really no computer has, no, that's never been done before. Um, and yeah, so, and, and then maybe it'll do just traffic control. I haven't really thought of that. Um, the, the Tesla's probably, there'll be some merits to communicating, for, for Tesla's to communicate to each other, but, but that won't be needed for full self-driving at all. Um, and for, for, long, for a long time, the, the vast majority of, the, of cars on the road will be manually driven. So the, the value of Tesla to Tesla communication is, is not that high, except for perhaps communicating uh, traffic issues uh, or you know, accidents, potholes, uh, things that may be helpful to um, the road closures and that kind of thing. Um, so it's like you're getting real time, a, a Tesla ahead of you has got, seen a road closure and you get that real time updated to your car so you don't get stuck in the road closure situation. Um, that's, that's the kind of stuff that I think we, we, we definitely, we are, we are working on right now. So, all right. All right, we have one last question um, and it's yours. Thank you very much. Hello, Elon. Hey. Uh, simply, I would just like to say thank you for everything you've done for Earth and the community and everything you've done. I have one question, and aside from working for Tesla, being a shareholder, or purchasing a Tesla, how can the masses help uh, push your vision? All right, well, I think just generally, um, you know, encouraging sustainable energy uh, and being supportive of that, I think is, is really helpful. Um, so, uh, but I, I, I say, you're, you're doing great so far. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like I said, without your support, we, we, Tesla wouldn't be where it is. So it's people like yourself and, and everyone in this room and out there, um, and the three million people who've, who've bought our cars, uh, and the, the, the millions who've, who've gotten solar, and uh, you know, that's all, that all really helps uh, you know, make the world a better, better place for the future. Um, and and I'd, I'd say, like, it definitely, uh, like, I'd like to sort of convey a, a message of, of optimism about the future. Um, and like, if we, if we work, you know, really hard to accelerate sustainable energy, sustainable transport. Uh, the future will be good, you know. It's and and I think just just make sure people know that. Like, and I'm I, I'm not suggesting complacency at all. Uh, I'm just, I'm literally saying if, if we work hard towards a sustainable future, we will achieve it. Um, and and the future is bright. So. Thank you very much. Thank you.